All right, so we are here. First tutorial video on how to do a bugrarium, how to set it up from start to finish. I will be going over what plants I'm using, the substrate I'm using, how to water it, how to take care of it in the long run, what to do if you run into some problems, and I'll try to be as detailed as possible. Um, if you feel like I missed something, please ask me and I will be more than happy to come back and answer your question. So let's start. First off, let's go over the equipment I'll be using um, for the Bacarium itself. I'm going to use this little extra duo jar. I forgot the actual name they call this, but it's a little glass jar with the lid. That's going to help keep humidity high. Uh, that's going to be simple, small setup. You can put that next to a window seal. You can take that to your office, to your cubicle, and just enjoy, you know? So something. let's start off with something very easy. Once we get the hang of it, we'll go into the next level. Um, so yeah, let's begin. Let's start out with substrate. So I don't know if you guys remember a couple months ago or a couple weeks ago, I made a substrate video, tutorial video, where I went over what I mix for my substrate. This is my own personal mix of Dua Jungle Soil with peat moss. This is what we're going to be using. And if you have questions regarding this substrate, I suggest looking back into my videos and seeing, watching how I set this up, how I mix them up. So that's going to be the base. I'm not going to put sand at the bottom or pebbles or anything like that, just because I really don't need any draining. This is a bog aquarium. This is a bog. So you don't need to be draining water in a swamp or in a bog. They, you know, plants that are from bogs or from swamps thrive in watery conditions. So we're going to go ahead and apply some of this. And I'm pretty much going to fill it. I'll let you guys know when. I feel like I'm going to be using most of this already. I want to thank my three-year-old for supplying the spoon. As you can tell. <laughs> He has plenty, he won't miss it. Yeah, it seems like I will be using all of this, which is fine. All right, let's flatten it out. Perfect. A little bit left. All right, so that's about inch and a half, almost two inches of substrate depth, which will be good for this small little sundew. And I want to thank California Carnivores again for sending this awesome plant, one of three. I mean, this is so beautiful. And alongside that, you can see why I picked this little jar for it. Of course, this sundew is going to get bigger. It's going to grow some flowers if it's uh, happy. And once we get to that point, we'll go ahead and transfer it over. But this is just the basic on how I set up my bug rims. I'm, I'm showing you what I do exactly on each and one of them. Um, of course, the size is just very different from the ones I have set up, but this is the backbone. This is what I used. This is how I set them up, and it's been working well, so I'm just going to share it with you. So once you have that stuff straight in, you're going to go ahead and 
pull out your plant very carefully. So the way I pull my plant out is, let's see, try to focus. I squeeze all along the pot just like that. You know what? It's fine. Let's make a mess. No one said this was a clean hobby, right? I'm going to get some tweezers. I'm going to just go ahead and loosen it up. As you can tell, there's some more peat moss down here. I think that's what they're being used. It looks like peat moss. Once you have the majority of the plant out with the top layer of the moss, you're just going to relieve that. And scrape off some of this extra. So as you can tell, the roots on this sundew are super healthy. Look at that. That's how you know you're buying great plants from a supplier. Look at that healthy root. Okay. So I'm going to keep that layer of substrate. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this aside. Bring back my little jar. And I'm going to make a small little hole right here in the middle. And it's not going to go all the way down, but I just kind of want to make it space for it. Because that's where this is going. Just like that. So I picked the side I want the front to be, and I feel this is the front part. I'm going to gently drop it there, and oh god, this is tricky. Oop, there it goes. So, with the tweezers, I'm going to go ahead and just push and tuck this in and once I start watering this the water itself is gonna make a tight seal around the the root so I don't have to worry about actually making sure that the root is couple of centimeters in the dirt just because like I said once I water this the water itself is going to help seal that gap so that already looks awesome oops sorry I'm always careful that I don't want to put any kind of dirt on the little dews because it could damage them so once I have that set, I am going to add moss around this. There's already moss surrounding the sundew, but I want to add moss to cover up the remaining soil that's showing. So here's a little trick. Usually I would add UG, but this time I'm going to skip UG. Um, I want the sun due to be the center of attention. I don't want it to get distracted by flowers from Utricularia, so I'm gonna go ahead and just add aquatic moss that has been cooking in its own humidity. <laughs> so this is Christmas moss that I have put aside and I have been spraying it once a day with water so it can adjust to an immersed growth because if I just were to pull moss from my aquarium it would die pretty quickly so this has a couple of days I would say maybe like a month or so it's been growing out of water and humidity 
I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit. Sorry for the noise, my dog is waking up, but he'll go back to sleep. Just a couple of slivers of moss. We'll use this for some other setups. And if you guys are thinking about questions as I'm doing this, please write them down. Like I said before, I will I will do my best to answer them the best or the most um, easiest way possible. I am not an expert in this. I am not a professional. I think I'm just very lucky that this has been working for me. <laughs> so any greater technical questions, I do refer to um, people like at California carnivores or, you know, well-known carnivorous plant growers, you know, just because I am still learning, I am still getting into this. Um, so if I don't answer your question right away, it's because I'm getting informed on how to answer that question. And while I do this, I've just realized that I haven't really introduced myself to you guys. I mean, you guys have known me from my Instagram, um, at my aqua gardens, but I really haven't told you my backstory or what's, you know, who am I, you know, per se. Well, my name is Lando. I am 38 years old. I have two beautiful children and a beautiful wife. I work in the veterinary field. I've been in this hobby for about, I want to say 10 years now. Well, no, I would say seven or between seven and nine, somewhere around there. I started in aquascaping, which, you know, it's basically planted tanks, planted aquariums. Um, and then slowly just this last year have transitioned into carnivorous plants. And if you guys hear that chirp in the background, <laughs> those are the dart frogs that I bought my daughter. Um, so hopefully we can hear them again. Pretty awesome. <laughs> they... I hope you were guys that were able to hear that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I will stay quiet every single time they chirp. Hopefully you guys can hear them. Um, so yeah, anyways. Um, I started as an aquascaper. Um, I was doing aquascape for a couple of years. Um, I was lucky enough to meet great people in the hobby, which I learned from. Uh, shout out to uh, Brian. Brian, you know who, who I'm talking about. Uh, he was one of the dudes that kind of inspired me to push my talent more, you know. Great aquascaper. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't keep his Instagram updated, but his some of his stuff is amazing. He's local San Diego aquascaper. Um, so, yeah, I did that. Aquariums. Uh, I had There was a point where I had like about eight aquariums in the house. My wife was very supportive of that. <laughs> And it was just a hobby. First, I started as a hobby, and then it turned into a therapy, and then it just developed into something that I was very passionate about. Um, I still do aquascapes, but not as much. I have uh, one and a half tanks that are still aquascaped. Uh, my 20-gallon aquarium and the small 3-gallon where I keep all my shrimp, my neocaridina, which... I officially have turned into a paludarium, uh, which I will keep you guys updated on that one. I'll make a video of that one soon. But yeah, so I slowly transitioned into terrestrial plants, into carnivorous plants. And for some reason or another, carnivorous plants have grown well under me. They've thrived. They've... Um, They've given me like more motivation because they have been doing so well to continue working with them. So that's why I started these barbariums because 
they are so easy to upkeep if you know what your goal is, you know? Um, I know some of the Saracenias require dormancy, and I think that's one of the hardest part about keeping carnivorous plants. You have to know their dormancy. And something I want to explain is I do get a lot of comments asking about what do I do for dormancy. I, there's really not much I can do. When you live in Southern California, you really don't get a winter. You don't get cold. You don't get snow. You don't get anything that would trigger the plant to actually go into dormancy. Yes, you can put them in a dark corner in the garage or here and there. or. But I think about it as, well, if they're going to go dormant, all the other plants around that ecosystem are going to die off. Like my UG. The UG is going to die. Uh, my Bucephalandra is going to die. So I decided to just leave them out for the winter. Let California winter do its course with them. They'll bounce back. I've already had two Saracenias that have gone through Southern California dormancy and they've bounced back. I did see some die off. Um, so for those that are saying they're going to die, they're going to die, that you know, it's a matter of time before the tanks fail, blah, blah, blah. I respect that, but personally, I haven't seen it. I've seen all my plants bounce back, um, so I'm not too worried about that. But thank you very much, though, for your concern, for your comments, uh, for your tips. So that's probably the most technical aspect about keeping carnivorous plants. Um, a lot of people also have been telling me, how often do you feed them? What do you feed them? This or that. Don't worry about that. I really don't feed my plants. It's not a priority. I mean, if I do, it's maybe like one cricket a month. Um, but it's not like I have a... A selections of crickets you know that I have in a container or anything like that no I just let them do their own thing and and once in a while you know I'll see a small little fruit fly in one of my sundews or a big cricket or or random bug in one of my saracenias one of my nepenthes pictures I mean just leave them do their thing and eventually they'll get some bugs in there um, so yeah, that's that was a little bit about me. Um, my name's Lando. I have two kids. I am married. I've been married for nine years. I was originally aquascaping. Then I jump into this. Um, and yeah, thankfully, you know, I've been doing this for so many years that for some weird, awesome reason, my Instagram just started booming. And this, here we are now. And I have to thank people like you who are watching this, who comment, who ask me questions, who follow me, you know, and I also have to thank people like, or companies like California Carnivores and um, who else is uh, supporting us? Let's see. Um, I know I'm in the talks with Ultim Nature Systems regarding them uh, sponsoring a uh, an aquarium a small little aquarium for the next tutorial so hopefully you know I hear a response back but thanks to them anyways for you know having that in mind that you know they are interested in you know contributing um, so yeah that's that's where we are right now uh, so back to this uh, as you can tell I am all done uh, this setup is all finished very simple very easy And now you just have to enjoy watching this grow, watching it thrive. And that's that. So, and as I was saying earlier, once you water this, once you add water, the soil is going to close that gap in between the root and the little divot that I had created. So, water. Let's talk about maintaining this. This is reverse osmosis water. This is all the water, the only kind of water I use for all my setups. Um, it's low in nutrients or zero nutrients, and it's the best kind that you can use for any kind of carnivorous plant. I keep it wet. I keep I water them once to twice daily for something this small. You really don't have to worry about watering it since there's going to be a lid on it. 
um, it's going to self-preserve because of the humidity. So all you do is just go around and water. And I will go ahead and flood to cover the moss. And by moss, I mean the Christmas moss I have in there. All right, let's see. Go ahead and do a little bit more water. And I'm just going to... Yeah, I'll do a little bit more water. I hope you guys are having a good day today. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I hope that I motivate you guys to try this on your own. Um, it's very rewarding once you do something like this and it's just thriving and looking great. So there you go. That's going to be the finish setup. I am very happy with this. I didn't think it was going to be as good as this or as easy as this, but that is pretty cool. Let me show you guys. Or actually, you know what? Since there's water in there. Am I okay with that amount of water? You know what? I think I'm going to release some of it. So give me one second. Let me see. Just gonna dump some of this out. Okay, there. I'm happier with that. So let me just clean it up really quick. Give me one second. Let me go ahead and clean that glass for you. Let me clean and I'll show you a way on how I clean my glass after watering it so it doesn't leave those water stains. I usually just get paper towel, fold it in like this, and I just gently clean it this clean it like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a small little tutorial. This is the fundamentals, the foundation of how I create them, how I make them, how I set them up. I use my own substrate mix. If you guys like I said before, haven't seen the video of how I make my mix, you can look for it on my YouTube channel. It's, uh, I think it's maybe the fourth video on my playlist. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, please, please, please ask, ask away. Any concerns, any comments, any likes, they're all accepted. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. This is a smaller one. We will definitely be making the bigger one in the next couple of days. And I will let you know release date. Thank you very much for all your patience. Thank you for all your interest in this. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.